Have you been wondering how to apply the rational zero theorem to find the real zeros of some polynomial function? Well, then you probably should get out more. I'm just kidding. Then you probably should watch this video because that's what I'm going to help you with. So maybe I should get out more, huh? So what we're going to do is first talk about what this thing kind of is and uh, how to apply it. So the rational theorem basically states that if you take the factors of your constant term in the polynomial and call those factors P and then take the factors of the leading coefficient, which is the coefficient of the highest power of X, call that Q. And then you take the factors, all the factors of P, divide them by all the factors of Q, all of the possibilities. This would then give you the list of possible real zeros. Okay, so let's do that. So let's list out the factors of 15 or negative 15. It really doesn't matter. You're going to have both positive and negative factors here. So the easiest way to think about it is 1 times 15, right? I mean, that the, that's definitely a factor. All right, so 1 times 15. And not only is positive 1 times a negative 15 going to give you negative 15, but also a positive 15 times a negative 1 would give you a negative 15. So that's why we have both plus minus, okay? So don't really overthink it from here on out. Just any factor you're going to just give plus minus. So two other factors then of 15, right? You're going to be thinking about also, oh, 3 and 5, right? So positive th and minus 3, positive and minus 5, and that's kind of it, right? There's no other factors. Okay, so that's cool. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take those, that list, and then you're going to divide it by the list of possible factors for 2. So again, what two numbers multiplied together will give you two, whole numbers that is. Well, 1 and 2. Okay? Now, in order to now find the possible list, what you have to do is identify each and every combination of possible divisions. In other words, you could have had this factor divided by this factor. Or you could have had this factor divided by this factor. Or you could have had this factor divided by this factor. Or you could have had this factor divided by that factor. Or you could have had this factor divided by this factor, this factor divided by this factor, this factor divided by that factor, that factor divided by that factor, right? You're going to have eight different types of possibilities here, really more than eight though. All right, this gets a little bit confusing and kind of crazy. Um, so just to give you an idea, you would take positive one divided by then positive one. That would give you a positive one. Then you would take positive, uh, let's do negative next. Then you take the negative one and divide it by the negative one, right? All I'm doing is I'm looking at these, this first set. That would give you a positive one as well. Then you would do, uh, I don't know, positive one divided by then the negative one. That would give you a negative one. And then negative one over positive one, right? This is the whole entire set of possibilities. But notice out of four possibilities, I really get two answers, both positive one and minus one, okay? So what that means then is that one, you know, if you look at the division of all four of these possibilities, you're going to have an outcome of plus or minus one. The same pattern will hold true for three and one. So you're going to have positive and negative three. Then you're going to have positive and negative five. And then you're also going to have positive and negative 15. Okay. Positive and negative 15. All right, great. Now, how about then the other combinations? right? Because now we have to also do all those numerators now over the denominator, other denominator that is. So again, you'd have plus one over positive two, that's going to be a positive one half, then you're going to have a negative one over a negative two, that's also a positive one half, right? Then you're going to have a negative one over a positive two, that's going to give you a negative one half, and then you're going to have a positive one over a negative two, and that's going to give you a negative one half. And if you notice, those four possibilities also will give you only two possible answers. So therefore, and both plus minus. So therefore, if you notice the pattern, you don't really have to worry about the signs. All you're going to do is you're just going to simply take this number, put it over that number, and then make sure you write positive minus, okay? Plus minus. Then you're going to have 3 over 2, plus minus. Then you're going to have 5 over 2, plus minus. 5, whoops, sorry, 5 over 2, plus minus. And then you're going to have 15 over 2, both plus minus. So you really have four positives and four negatives up here, so for a total of eight. 
and then you're gonna have four positives and four negatives down here for a total of eight. So in total, you're gonna have 16 possibilities. 16. Now, how are we gonna use then the rational zero theorem to find, well, I mean, we, we did use the rational zero theorem here. This is the list, but now we have to use something called the remainder theorem to try to, to try and guess at what the zeros are gonna be. And by the way, you're only gonna have three zeros. So three out of these 16 numbers are gonna work, okay? I don't like the odds of that, right? Three over 16, what does that work out to be? You get about an 18.75% chance of picking the right one at the start, okay? I don't like those odds. Um, but that's really the reality of the situation right now. So, you know, just guess. Just guess at this point. You don't really have anything else to do, right? Because that's how we would apply this kind of technique without using a calculator. So what you would do is this is the idea. You're going to start with, unless you have some intuition about this, you're going to start with positive 1, and you're going to plug in positive 1 everywhere you see an x. Okay? And the whole thing you're trying to test now is if when you plug in positive 1 for every x, if this thing works out to be equal to 0, then whatever number you plugged in here, which we did positive 1, this would be a zero value. In other words, that's a value that results in an overall value of zero for the function. In other words, if you were to graph this thing, you would notice the location on the x-axis would be a one where the function crosses. But does this even work? So two minus three minus 32 minus 15 is zero. Um, does that equal zero? I don't think so. I don't think so. So guess what? One of your 16 possibilities is eliminated. So you know it's not a positive one. Positive one is not gonna be a zero, okay? That means now you're down to three out of 15 because you got 15 opportunities left. Oh, you got a 20% chance now, right? I don't know why I need to calculate for that one, but you got a 20% chance. Your probability is getting better. Um, yeah, right? We're, we're, not gonna, we're, we're not necessarily gonna sit here and I don't, I don't unless you want me to, um, I don't, do you, do you want to, this video will be like three hours long. Uh, by the way, you're not even going to do this on a test because, um, you know, you're going to be working on one problem for 40 minutes and then you have probably like 40, 45 minutes for your test. So you're barely going to get one problem done. You get a seven on the test and then it's going to be like, Oh, why'd you spend so much time? Well, you, you didn't let me use a calculator and told me to use this silly theorem. Anyway, it's not a silly theorem, but you'll never use it in your life ever. So the way to kind of go about this then is you kind of have to use the calculator a little bit, all right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this thing. So 2x cubed to give you a little visualization. 2x cubed minus 3x squared uh, minus 32x and then minus 15. So now hit graph. And if you notice now, voila, this function, okay, remember it starts down here and it comes up and then it's going to turn somewhere, right? And then it's going to come down and turn, and it's a cubic function. So if you notice, the graph crosses the x-axis in three locations. Now it looks like negative one, negative two, negative three. So here is a negative three. Okay, so let's write that as one of the zeros. Next is equal to negative three. Um, it looks like here might be a one half, right? I don't, you know, just by looking at the graph, I don't know, but you know, seeing the list of possibilities, I know it's gonna be a negative one half. And then uh, over here, one, two, three, four, five, positive five, x being equal to, equal to positive five is also a uh, real zero. So let's take a look at now all those possibilities we had over here. Do you see these zeros in this list of possibilities? I think I do, right? I mean, I see my negative three, here it is, okay? I see my negative one half, here it was, and I see my positive five, here it is, okay? So how are you really going to test all 16 values? Even still, there's another way to kind of approach it too, and I'll go through that in a second. But now since I know what zeros are going to work, let me show you that it's going to work. Let me show you that this will equal zero, okay? Because that's kind of the point. Uh, let's choose, it doesn't really matter which one, let's choose 5. So plug in 5 here, 5 here, 5 here. 
All right, and then when you work this on out, right, 5 times 5 is going to be 25. 25 times 5 is going to be how much? Right, 125. 125 multiplied by 2 is a 250. My goodness, I hope that's right. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to double check on 1, 2, parentheses, 5, raised to 3. If I speak softly, nobody will realize I'm doing this. Okay, good, 250. Uh, let me clear it so nobody sees it. Okay, um, so then what we're going to do is same thing here. Right, 5 squared is going to be 25, multiplied then by a 3 is going to be 75, minus then the 30, oh no, 32 times 5, you got to be kidding me, what's that, 160? I'm going to cheat again, so 32 times 5, I don't know, nobody sees, okay, 160, yeah, it's a 160, everyone. All right, so then we're going to subtract 15 from it, and we want to check to see whether this thing equals 0. So this time, plug it into the calculator, all right? Minus 75, minus then the 160. Minus 15, and what do you get? <gasps> by gosh, by golly, zero. Now what that means is then the number that you have plugged in here, right? What happened? The number you have plugged in here now is a zero of the function. And that's what the graph showed us, right? And that's kind of what this list is telling us is possible. Okay? Now, right. So, I mean, that, that's all that there is to it. But imagine now you got lucky, and, you know, you found one of the zeros um, quickly, like you found positive five was a zero. Okay. Uh, then what you would, I, what I would do, okay, what I would do then is I wouldn't start, I wouldn't keep guessing. All right. Um, I would kind of do this now. I would take this function and then I would divide it by uh, the factor of that zero. So remember, if your zero value is x is positive five, x equals positive five, then your factor is really x minus five. And I would divide this now into the above polynomial. Now you have to realize you can do synthetic division on this. So let's take a look. Bam. So what goes into these columns are going to be the coefficients of your x cubed term, your x squared term, your x term, and your constant. So the coefficient of the x cubed is going to be a 2. The coefficient of the x squared is a negative 3, negative 32, and then a negative 15 for the constant. Great. Let's get rid of that. And then basically what happens is when you do, you know, when you divide this factor, into this polynomial, what you have to do is you have to find the, the zero value of it. So you would set this bad boy equal to zero, solve that for x, and it would be positive five, which is the same thing as the, right, the zero is positive five. So really what you're doing here is you're plugging in uh, the zero value, okay, positive five. But when you set it up as a division, you actually, you have to have this as a factor. You cannot write just x plus five or plus five, because it doesn't, it, it doesn't work. So now what you're going to do is you're going to follow a simple series of steps. Drop the 2 on down. You don't put anything in this box. That's why it's red. Then you do uh, multiply the bottom number, multiply by the outside number, so you get a 10. Add this on up this column, so that's going to give you a positive 7. Then you take this bottom number, still multiply it by that outside number, so that's going to give you a 35. Positive. So add up this column, so that's going to give you a positive 3. Then you take that bottom value, multiply it by that outside value, and that's going to be a positive 15. Add this on up, and oh look, 0. This is the remainder, okay? When the remainder is a zero, you know that whatever factor you use to divide into the original polynomial function is indeed a factor, okay? And then what that means is that the zero of this factor, in other words, positive five, is a zero of this overall function, okay? So then what I would do is I would say, okay, wonderful. Now I'm going to take then... Uh, these are the coefficients, right, of the remaining then quotient. So this is the constant term, this is the coefficient of the x term, and that's the coefficient of the x squared term. So when you do this division, basically, what happens is the result, or the quotient, is going to be 2x squared plus 7x plus 3, right on down here. Okay, this is the result. Then what you can do is now, since you have a quadratic, and this is nice because they gave you a cubic, so I know, you know, ahead of time that when I do this division, I'm going to end with a quadratic. I now, since I have a quadratic, I now know techniques to use to find zeros of quadratics, right? Do you know how to find now zeros of quadratics? Well, you would have to use what? The quadratic function, right? So what you could do is this. You can simply then use the x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And you're probably thinking to yourself at this moment, why in the world would I do that when I can just plug in these numbers into this, this function up there and just, you know, 
I know it's going to take a while, but that's a lot easier. Well, it is going to take a while. That's the problem. And uh, if you're timed on your test, this is a faster way. I know it might look a little harder, but this is faster. Now what you can do is you identify your a, b, and c. So the a value, remember, is the coefficient of the x squared term, so that's a 2. The b value is the coefficient of the x term, so that's a positive 7. And the c term is the constant term, which is a 3. And what you can do is you can go and plug it on in. And what you're going to realize is that what you come up with now is going to be basically negative 3 and a negative 1 half after you do all this math. Another thing you can do, if you're allowed to use the calculator, is you can use this program. All right, the quadratic function program. And if you have a TI calculator and you want to know how to program this, take a look in the description below. I'm going to leave you a link to a video. It's like three or four minutes, and you're going to love this program because watch how easy this is. Ready? I'm going to run the quad program. It tells me plug in my A, 2, plug in my B, 7, plug in my C, 3, and boom. What are the zeros? X equals negative 0 0.5, which is the same thing as negative 1 half, and x was also equal to negative 3, and that's what I said would happen when you use this. Okay, because that's basically what the calculator, what the program does. And those are the values that we had before. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of ways to like look at this thing and, you know, um, is that my dog? Yes, that is my dog. Probably the mailman's coming. Probably expect the mailman about 20 minutes. I don't even understand how the dog, it's like, dog starts barking, 20 minutes later the mailman's here. I'm like, almost every day, I'm like, you hear the mailman 20 minutes before he gets here? Or she gets here? How? Anyway, guys, thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, if this helped you out at all, like and subscribe. Maybe even tell some of your classmates. Uh, we love to help more people. We love all the support we've been getting. Thank you so very much. And by the way, we have thousands of videos out there, not only in mathematics, but chemistry and physics as well. We solve specific problems, okay? Because that's what you're going to see on your tests and your exams. We want to help you do well on your tests. We want to help to, we want to help you to get where you got to go, right? Medical school, you need good grades, right? You want to be an engineer? Well, you definitely have to know some math. Guys, thanks for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care.